Now, we all know Old Mate lives in the Dark Ages, somewhere around the Middle Ages, the 1400s or 1500s, because I refuse to bow down and embrace the IoT, the Internet of Things, connectivity, everything connected to everything. It is the, the best thing since sliced bread. But when you think about it, the amount of security flaws in some IoT devices, I think I'm justified by not embracing it. But for one IoT vendor, things have just got ugly. It's breaking news time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, IoT vendor Wise confirms server leak. From Backyard Tech, this is breaking news. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is breaking news time here at the Backyard Tech Channel for TBIM Monday morning. I just saw this one while we were doing the Russian disconnection from the internet um, news story uploaded just before. Look, I know people have a shot at me because I refuse to bow down and believe the IoT is the world's best thing since sliced bread. But I've mentioned it before, there are, there are a number of security loopholes that make the internet of things dangerous. So I know I live in the 1500s by not having everything in my house connected to everything in my house connected to everything in my house. But you leave yourself open. And here we are with Wise in a big, big problem. IoT, let's get into this one. IoT vendor Wise confirms security leak. Details of 2.4 million users were exposed online for 22 days. Wise a company that sells smart devices like security cameras, smart plugs, smart light globes, and smart door locks, confirmed today a server leak that exposed the details of roughly 2.4 million customers. The leak occurred after an internal database was accidentally exposed online. Wise co-founder Dong Sheng Song said in a forum post published over Christmas. Song said the exposed database and Elastic's search system was not, uh, was not a production system. However, the server was st a st storing valid user data. The Elastic Search Server, a technology for powering super fast search queries, was set up to help the company sort through the vast amount of user data, the WISE exec explains. Quote, to help manage the extremely fast growth of WISE, we recently initiated a new internal project to find better ways to measure basic business metrics like device activations, failed connection rates, etc. We've we copied some data from our main production servers and put them into a more flexible database that's easier to query. The new data table was protected. Uh, sorry, the new data table was protected when it was originally created. However, a mistake made by WISE employee on December 4, when they were using the database and the previous security protocols for this data were removed. We're still looking into this event to figure out why and how this happened. The leaky server was discovered, oh, close quote, I'm sorry. The leaky server was discovered and documented by cybersecurity consulting firm 12 Security. Geez, they find a lot of stuff, don't they? Now, most of you guys will be very well aware of 12 Security. I've seen some of their stuff. I'm not overly familiar with them, all right? A lot of you guys probably are. And independently verified by reporters from IPVM, a blog dedicated to video surveillance products. Song showed that his, his dissatisfaction with how the two parties, 12 Security and IPVM, handled the data leak disclosure giving WISE only 14 minutes to fix the leak before going public with their findings. Quote, We were first contacted through a support ticket at 9.21am on December 26 by a reporter from IPVM.com. The article was published almost immediately after published to Twitter at 9.35am. It was published in conjunction with a blog post from a private security company also... Hang on. It was published in conjunction with a blog post from a private security company also published on December 26. We were made aware of this article at 10 a.m. from a community member who had read the article, close quote. Song confirmed that the leaky server exposed the details such as the email addresses, the email addresses customers use to create WISE accounts, Nicknames users assigned to their WISE security cameras, Wi-Fi networks, and SSID identifiers. 
and for and for 24,000 users, Alexa tokens connect uh, to connect Wise devices to Alexa devices. The Wise exec denied that Wise API tokens were exposed via the server. In its blog post, 12 Security claimed they found API tokens that they say would have allowed hackers to access Wise accounts from any iOS or Android service. <coughs> Excuse me. Song second, Song also denied 12 Securities claims they were sending user data back to an Al Alibaba cloud server in China. Third, Song also clarified 12 Security claims that Wise was collecting health information. The Wise exec said they only collect health data from 140 users who were beta testing the new smart scale product. Song didn't deny Wise was collecting height, weight and gender information. He did, however, deny others. We have a uh, quote, we have never collected bone density and daily protein intake, close quote, the Wise exec said. We wish our scale was that cool, close quote. For now, the three parties involved in the disclosure of the leak appear to be at odds in regards to the specifics of this particular leak. Either way, Wise said it decided to forcibly log out all Wise users out of their accounts and unlike all third party app integrations, two steps that will generate new Wise API tokens and Alexa tokens once users re-log in and relink Alexa devices to Wise accounts. So, some idiot employee leaves a testing server wide open now of course any iot company is going to deny sending data to countries like russia china and the like they're going to deny because the last thing they want is public dissatisfaction around the way data is manipulated now this is where I get worried, is when companies like Wise and the like have these testing servers that are left open. Now, okay, I know I live in the dark ages. I know I refuse to bow down and believe the IoT is the next best thing since sliced bread and that it is utterly infallible, according to some people. But I certainly don't want my data at risk. Okay, some of you guys are probably completely connected and that's fine. Congratulations, you're part of the IoT, you must be happy. Obviously your data and your security, you don't care about. I do. Now we've seen many times here at Backyard Tech and we've read articles, you know, Facebook data leaks, Apple data leaks, Twitter, Instagram, social media, Microsoft, Apple, Oracle, and you're, you're trying to convince me that the IoT is 100% infallible and nothing ever gets leaked. And if you're not part of the IoT community, you're living in the dark ages. You're kidding me, right? It's a worry. I keep saying, and I know, I know people don't like it when I, I say this. The IoT stuff a seven-year-old can hack into it. And you've also got to remember that in some cases, some IoT devices need specific ports open to actually work. And those ports, whether it's in your firewall or whatever, you can, you can get the metadata off the, off the um, data streams and the port numbers. I'm not surprised, but you know, that's just me. I don't like the IoT. I think it's flawed. I think it's, you know, we've done news story. Fridge is getting hacked into. And yet people are convinced that your data is so safe with the IoT. Some people maybe have never been hacked, but never say never. Okay, stick around, more coming up. Have a good one, cheers. This has been another presentation from Backyard Tech.